everybody. Welcome to Create and Bug Live. And we're live like we always are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Courtney and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Michaela from Sakura of America. You guys probably recognize Michaela. She's done several live shoots with us. Can you talk a little bit about Sakura of America? What is that? Sure. We are known for Jelly Roll pens, Pigma Micron, Koi watercolors, and lots of other fun products. A lot of our artists use a ton of the Sakura products. I've been really enjoying the Koi um, little set, paint set. Oh, I keep yes. it in my backpack, I love it. It's good for on the go. It's awesome, it has a little cool water brush in it. Lisa Congdon uses a lot of their products. Um, Jennifer Orkin Lewis, who's on our site. Mm -hmm. I think I use a ton of the Koi brush pens for the service design you class. <laughs> I use them all the time. Um, and Michaela's been here all week with us and she's been filming some classes on letter writing and also um, calligraphy, modern calligraphy and lettering. We're super excited. We have a 30 day lettering challenge coming up with Michaela and that is um, gonna come up this spring. There'll be more on that a little bit later. But also because next month is national. It's national letter writing month. So it's encouraging you to send snail mail and write letters to each other just to kind of connect to one another, get off your devices and put pen to paper. Which I love. I feel like I hear that complaint from artists yes. and creatives all the time. People who used to draw like in high school or maybe even in college but now are like graphic designers mm -hmm. or maybe don't even have creative fields and they're like, I'm always on my phone or I'm always on my computer but I never pick up a pen. Mm -hmm. I feel like writing a letter as opposed to an email is so nice. Yeah, it's really personal. People get to see your handwriting. You can have a lot of fun addressing envelopes, decorating your cards, and just connecting with one another. I love that. As an adult, I feel like everything I get is bills in the mail and so it's really <laughs> nice to get some cards and some postcards. I personally send a ton of um, mail to friends. I have a friend who's in mm -hmm. Hawaii right now who I send a lot of packages to. Yeah, I'm dating, I send a lot of postcards too. It's like so That's fun. That's cool. Yeah, it's like really cool. Do you write a lot of letters? I do. Um, I like writing thank you cards. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like making them and then just writing like something nice about how the gift mattered to you and like what it means and how you're using it. I think that's nice to do. So in addition to us and Creative Bug loving uh, writing and sending some mail art, Hello Lucky, who's one of our artists, yes. and Egg Press, they've teamed up to do this entire campaign called Write On. Yeah, so um, you can visit writeoncampaign.com write on and there are a ton of resources there to help you kickstart your letter writing habits. Basically, the whole campaign started in 2014. Tess Darrow of Egg Press challenged herself and her staff to write 30 letters in 30 days for the month of April. You know we love a good challenge. Yeah, and so um, they also have like a great website. It's got tons of resources. Some days you might get stuck, like what do I write today? It'll they'll have prompts like write a note to your favorite teacher, letting that. them know what they meant to you. Um, send a note to your best friend saying I'm thinking of you. Things like that. And, and Allie's going to be posting a link to that too. Oh yes, and they're encouraging people to use the hashtag write on uh, with the underscore between write and on, and um, document all the letters you're writing. And they post those on their website. They have a feed of like everyone using the hashtag and showing the kind of mail they're sending out. It's really cool. I love that. So you can connect with the friend that you're writing the card to, mm -hmm. or the teacher, or what have you. But then there's this whole online community through the hashtag right yeah. underscore on which is awesome yeah and so um it was perfect for us we started working them a couple with them a couple years ago both egg press and hello lucky print these beautiful cards you've seen them everywhere and this year they've printed them on beautiful mohawk high quality paper and envelopes so nice if you could feel this it's letterpress printed so it has like a really nice texture it's going to take the markers so well and this is a little six pack yes so the only place you can get these cards is on their website and they are kickstarter kits so you basically Go ahead, go online, fill out the form, and they have a pay what you will model, which is really cool. Um, and it's got like kind of a pay it forward model. So you purchase these cards. It comes with one of our pens. And that's a jelly roll? Yes, it's our jelly roll pen. So these are really, really great for writing notes because they dry quickly, they're smooth, they write on a lot of nice different paper qualities. And um, every year they design a new design. So these are the fun so designs cute. they came up with this year. This one is uh, Hello Lucky. This one is by Egg Press. So, so cute, I love these. Yeah, and there's like, like I said, all these resources. And so, we have a pack for giveaway. Yes, one pack for giveaway. So to enter to win that, you want to share this live shoot um, with a friend and then comment below that says you've shared it so we know. And then we'll contact mm -hmm. you 
via Facebook to get your address. So one lucky winner will get a pack of six cards so that you can be right on time and start your letter writing in April, which is awesome. Yeah, and if you are a big fan of letter writing, they actually have something else on the site called a party kit, and it comes with everything you need to gather all your friends and family together oh, and throw like a wine and cheese party and just sit down and write notes and That's just so be cool. together. So be together and then send it and be together with someone else. We need a little help um, with inspiration for actual lettering. Michaela is going to show us some things that she sure. covered for the 30 days of lettering, which will come out soon. Um, yeah, so what do we have in front of us? We've got a black card, some craft paper. Yeah, we've got lots of different supplies. And a lot of fun, like jelly rolls, some of these right on dark paper. Um, yeah, maybe start with one of your favorites. Okay, sure. This is one of the cards I made. This is using our Koi watercolor palette. I love that. And I layered Micron pen over this, as this well as good. white jelly roll, which you can use after the paint has dried. So kind of like a throwback to MC Hammer, can't touch this. But I it's also it. a cactus, so it's, it's funny. Cactus. And um, also another watercolor project you can do, this is a koi wash in the background. And then I've lettered over it with the koi coloring brush, which is one of Courtney's favorites. It's my favorite. And then outlined my um, writing with a gold jelly roll pen. So just kind of jazzes it up and gives it some shine, makes it stand out. And you know, it's hard to find cards that have like that shine on it pre-printed. They can be really expensive. You can just make them yourself. I love that. Um, don't forget about the envelope because oh, yeah. She did my name, which is so <laughs> fun, in this really beautiful neon red. It's the Vermilion. Vermilion Jelly Roll Moonlight. Super smooth. It comes in a couple different point sizes, so you can do thin and thick lines. And a bunch of neon colors. Yeah, and just have fun addressing your envelopes. I like love co that. color combinations are one of my favorite things to come up with. Yeah, it's so much fun. And I love just the variety of the styles of lettering and the scale and the size. It's really cool to have the name take up the entire envelope, which is pretty fun. Yeah, I give you some tips on laying out your lettering during the month challenges. Yeah, we're so excited for that. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't believe we just finished filming it today, so I'm like, oh, what's it coming out? I know. <laughs> it's been super inspiring to watch her do her work and like get to it, and we're going to talk about quotes, um, brush lettering, large scale, small scale, all kinds of good things. Alphabet. Lots of alphabets. Yeah. So what kind of card do you want to make? We were going to just play with these cards and also make a few of our own. Sure. Um, let's do, I'll do black, you do craft paper. Perfect. What do we start with? Um, I'm going to probably do like a pattern and then fun. do a fun word here. Okay, so. I love that. These perma paste, I didn't. I wasn't as familiar with these. I really like these. Yeah. And they go on dark paper too, right? They do. I used them here. So this is a gray paper. Fun. And on craft paper, they kind of give this sort of like washed out look, which is really cool. I love it. It's like a subtle texture. Yeah, and they're actually archival, so if you send this card to someone, they can keep it forever and it won't fade. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a paint marker, but it's not smelly at all. It doesn't smell. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to pump it. It's really easy and it's quick really to use. really nice. I'm going to play with these. Oh, patterns are fun. Let's see. What am I going to do? Yeah, and they come in <clears throat> both metallic and bold colors. Oh, I love that. And they also have a dual tip, right? Like chisel and a bullet. Mm-hmm. I like using the white on black. It gives kind of like that faux chalkboard look. Oh, cool. You're going to start with a pattern. Remember, we're live, so if you guys have questions for Michaela, she's so knowledgeable about all the different kinds of pens and even paints and things from Sakura. So feel free to write in and ask us questions. Right now, we're just playing, making some cards for National Write a Letter Month, which starts in April. And if you share this post with a friend and comment uh, in this particular live feed below, then we'll know you shared it, and you can win a pack of these really cool letterpress cards from Hello Lucky and Egg Press to get your uh, letter writing off to a good start starting April 1st. If you don't want to wait, you can just hop on their website and grab one. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, so pretty! <laughs> it's like chalkboard. It's like a bistro marker almost, but on paper. I love that. Mine's not going to look as nice as Michaela's. I'm actually going to do um, some Stardust Jelly Roll, which comes with like a pigmented color and glitter. So I'm just going to color inside here. We have our first question. Okay. Patty asks, are any of the products permanent on fabric? On fabric. I think I heard this whole thing when I went to the Sakura headquarters. You did. <laughs> um, so for fabric, we don't really carry anything that's like a fabric marker necessarily. It depends on what you're going to use it on. I have heard 
quilters use it, use microns, but we don't recommend drawing with our products on any fabric that you're intending to wash frequently. Right. So, for example, I do, one of the classes we do for the challenge is um, writing on a canvas tote bag. And that's not something I would wash every single day or every week necessarily. So not like a tea towel or a t-shirt. Yeah, so um, something that we could recommend for that is Identipen, which is a dual tip permanent marker. And it comes in, I think, eight colors. Yeah, it's really nice. It actually has like no odor, like a lot of permanent markers. Um, but the thing with a lot of these markers and so forth is for something to stay into fabric it needs to be dye based and these are a lot of these products are pigment based, right? Right. And you know, it depends on your detergents and too many variables. Too many variables, so it's probably not something I would recommend. Good question. I'm trying okay. to remember my lessons. <laughs> thick on the downstroke, light on the upstroke, but I think I've just made everything that looks good. thick. I'm not sure. markers bleed? Yeah, good question. So someone's asking, um, do the markers bleed? Well, Courtney's using the Permapic right now, and she's doing it on craft paper. Which is very fibrous. Um, anything mm -hmm. that was is like really inky would bleed, but it totally is not it's staying really nicely. That really depends on the type of paper you're using. So mm -hmm. the smoother the paper, the less likely you'll have bleed out. Um, usually bleeds come from fibrous papers, anything that's really toothy, and you want to make sure your pen is paired with the correct kind of paper. For example, if you're using like a water-based pen like our Koi markers, you'd want to do that on a watercolor paper and not like a printer paper or drawing paper because that could or make Or marker it, paper works too. Right, and that can make it pilly otherwise. So yes. You want to make sure your paper is intended for the pen that's being used on it. Yeah, that's a good question. You want to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. Yeah. And good quality pens and good quality paper make a big difference. Totally. Um, I did not follow Michaela's tutorial where I'm supposed to keep my negative spaces similar. Why don't you color in your negative spaces with like a bright color or something? That's something fun you can do. And then if you do the moonlight, they're actually opaque. So okay. like paint markers, you can correct them and make, like, make your two L's very similar by covering up some of the blue. That requires me to be perfect in this step. <laughs> but it's a tiny nib, so you should be able to have a little more precision. I'm just doing a neon drop shadow on my letters. This really is amazing coverage. I'm doing light over dark here, which is pretty incredible. Oh, these look like little bunny ears. It's cute. Easter card. Yeah. Hello, bunny. We have our next question. Shauna is asking if you can use watercolor on those cards. Hi, Shauna. Welcome. Um, we're not using watercolor paper at the moment. Uh, I would recommend, just like we are talking about, using the right combination of pens to paper. Same mm -hmm. thing for paint. If you're working with something that's really lightweight, you're going to get like more rippling. Yeah. Um, even with the Koi watercolor set, like anything you introduce water into, you need to make sure that there's a paper that's either mixed media or watercolor paper. And the craft paper is a store-bought pre-folded card, but my black paper is just Strathmore Artigan. So this is a card that I folded myself. If you wanted to do a watercolor paper, you could make that yourself by cutting and folding too. Totally. Good questions, you guys. What else am I gonna do? Maybe yeah, I'll do so this fun. too. Plus, like sending a card to someone totally makes their day, especially if they got their utility bill on the same day, because then they got one good piece of mail and one bummer piece of mail. Yeah. It's a balance it out. <laughs> do you want to do some envelopes next? Yeah. So the Hello Lucky and Egg Press Write On cards come with also six envelopes, awesome. and they're blank and white, and you can decorate them. They're also pre printed with. Um, official write-on correspondence, and so you can actually track what number letter this is. So say it's day three of the letter writing challenge, I would put number three, mm -hmm. and it has like a little website and doodad here so that if the person receiving the letter is interested, they can go check it out I too. I love that. Just keeps paying it forward with the letter writing. That's awesome. Okay. I started an envelope earlier. I loved That's this hand cute. motif from Hello Lucky, and I was thinking I was going to send my mom a note, and she's obsessed with Halloween, so I was kind of doing Halloween motifs. This was fun. I used the, this is the permapig for this, which is so nice. That's just one pass, and mm -hmm. it's like so rich and painterly. And then I was using the Pigma brush pen because it's permanent. Yeah, so these are really good nice. materials to use because when you send them in the mail, if it's raining, it won't run. I love that. 
I'm going to do a border on my envelope. Oh, yeah, tell me about that pen. I wasn't uh, familiar with that pen until you came and told with us. This is a Pigma calligrapher pen. So um, you've probably seen calligraphy pens on the market before, and they can be like a marker nib, which is fibrous and kind of soft after you use it for a while. Yeah, it gets like fuzzy. It doesn't withstand pressure that, that well. This one is actually a plastic nib that feeds the ink between two pieces of plastic, so you can be really rough with this. It's like it absorbs it's pressure, yeah. but also is flexible. Right, so. Which is really cool to watch her use it. It's really fun. It gives you some really Oops. nice lines. Um, let's just do like a regular basic dashed line pattern. It's almost like a stamp. I love it. I want to try one. And these are our Pigma inks, so they come in a lot of our products, like Micron, Graphic Pen, we have a Pigma brush pen. And I know you said, like, you really have to give a lot of pressure for a really clean line. Mm -hmm. And if you lighten up the pressure, which takes a little bit of practice, you can actually get a dry brush effect with that, too. Oh, fun. And we recommend when you open a fresh pack of these to kind of play with the nib a little bit to get used because it's a very different feeling. It's like really break firm. Break it in a little. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to. It's a pretty mystical envelope I'm working on here. I love it. <laughs> it's like magic voodoo. <laughs> yeah, make sure you leave space for your stamp. Yes. Oh, that's another thing. If you needed any more inspiration, um, I'm always advocating for going to the post office because I, I do send so many postcards. And check, like, ask about the stamps. Usually there are a few stamps at the register, and they're all, they always ask if you want stamps, but it's not always, like, the best ones, so ask to see the book because these Oscar de la Renta ones that just came out are amazing, and I really like these Wonder Woman ones as well. So it's fun to add, like, a cool stamp. I think this one will be good for my Halloween. Ooh, pretty. Kind of themed. I'm going to show you, um, I don't know if we've showed these on live before, but these are the Jelly Roll Gold Shadow pens. Oh, I love that. And we also have um, another product called Silver Shadow. And so basically what it does is when you Can write... You black? Sure. Actually, white's better for these. White. Here. Okay. So when you write with them, they come out in the color you see on the barrel. So this one is, uh, I believe, purple. But as the ink dries, and if you use more of like a porous paper, the ink will dry, and just the center of it will be gold, and the outline of it will be the color you see on the cap. I love that. Yeah, that's another thing. If you're, you've only used a couple types of the Jelly Roll pens, you can tell the different effects they have because the caps usually have like a little icon. So that's the moonlight. Um, this gold shadow has like a little falling star. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. So these so are pretty. both like the pinky purple ones, but this one is a silver shadow and this one is a gold shadow. And as it starts to dry, you can kind of see the difference. Yeah, I love that. So these are really pretty. Like if you did someone's name mm -hmm. on the lettering, you can add a lot of detail with these. I love it. So there's my border. I'm going to probably do a brush pen. Oh, yeah. Do you have I'll something over there? Guys. Let's see, I've got a black brush. Okay, let's do that. Who should I address this to? Let's do Allison. Oh, I love it. <laughs> is it two L's? Yes, two L's. It is two L's. Two L's. <laughs> so we're gonna do bold on the downstroke, light up, bold. Bold, light. I love that. And I'm gonna do a drop shadow, so I'll do it in gray. I'd probably only send mail using the Koi coloring brush pen in the summer, just because it is a water-based, so in case it rains or something. Which is cool, I know a lot of people use these markers, but because they're water-based, you can use them like watercolor. So in um, her class, Michaela shows how to blend them with a water brush, which is really mm -hmm. fun. Allison, do you want some mail, Allison? Always <laughs> do. We have our next question. Janice is asking, what do you need for supplies? So if you were just starting up, oh. how would you, what supplies would you need for that? For letter writing, um, is it Janice you said? Janice is asking what are some good supplies for a beginner. Yeah, like if you had to pick just one or two pens to start with. For letter writing, I would probably recommend um, one of our Fine Point Jelly Roll Classics. They come oh, nice. in a lot of really pretty colors and they yes. dry quick. Um, 
things get this way. Yeah, and then another option you could do is, um, these are new, pretty new still. I think we talked about these in the <gasps> bullet journal. These are the best. This is our new Pigma Micron PN, and PN stands for plastic nib. And so if you're heavy handed, or actually even left handed, you can write at all angles with this pen. It's really, really durable. And um, you know, it just withstands a lot of pressure, but still has that same great archival ink. So it's I good for letter these. writing. Mm -hmm. I have never been a huge Micron user just because I'm really hard on the tip, but now that these PNs have come out, I'm like obsessed. And because the nib is kind of flexible, you can vary your line uh, width. So if you do more pressure, it's a little bit of a wider line. If you do light, you can go really fine hairlines. I love that. So it's a really versatile pen for like lettering, drawing, illustration. Plus what's nice about letter writing is it's like so easy to throw in your purse and just while you're waiting in line instead of checking your phone or like at a cafe waiting for a friend or something, it's really easy to just pull out a little card or an envelope and decorate it as you, can, as you go. The microns are great just to throw in your bag. Um, if you want to be a little bit more ambitious and try some paint, the Koi watercolor sets are really fun. Yeah, I'm just doing a block print here. And then jelly rolls are amazing. The fact that you can do light on dark is pretty cool. Yeah, we have just so many products, so many fun things you can try for letter writing. I love that. That's really fun. So you could color that in and you could leave it as a style. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm going to do a metallic over that. Okay. We have another question. Debbie is asking, if my Sakura pigment ink pen dries out, can I bring it back to life or must I replace it? Um... It's probably best to replace them. You don't want to do anything like take the pen apart or anything like that. We definitely don't recommend doing that. You're going to get the best results with the fresh products. Um, and I always recommend people buying the packaged product because sometimes when you have the open stock in the store, you don't know who's like played with the pens or mm -hmm. how long they've been there. So I recommend doing like a blister card set. That's really helpful. And Michaela was telling me that they also recommend that you store your, the pens horizontally, right? Yeah, horizontally. So in a pen bag mm -hmm. is good. So like instead of a cup, you know, on your desk, like maybe finding a little cubby to stick them into. I saw this really cute DIY where somebody took a wine rack mm -hmm. um, and instead of putting bottles, they just put cups and so it was like all their pen organization. Oh, that's helpful. So it's all horizontal, which is also good for the wine. Um, it works for your pens. I love this white jelly roll because you can draw on top of the dark, which is really fun. So nice. I'm going to show you the souffle pen too. So this is another pen. It looks really similar to the jelly roll because the cap is the same, but it's different because it's a dimensional pen. So if you write really slow with it, it gives this really nice raised effect. And it works well over dark surfaces. You can do it on white paper. The slower you write, the more raised it is. And sometimes it looks kind of translucent when you first put it down, but as it starts to dry, you'll see the color start to look more like what's on the cap. I love that. Yeah, it's kind of amazing to see. And I feel like this pen is cool because this one and the Stardust, if you use it in your artwork, it's not something you can replicate digitally. Like you can't make a raised edge. You can't make right. a digital sparkle. So it makes your stuff one of a kind. I love that. Definitely adds to the ability to customize your cards and your letters. And you know, it makes people feel special. You spend a lot of time making these things for them. They really appreciate it. I know, I could sit in here and do this all day. It's so fun. Awesome. Remember guys, if you share and comment below, then you'll be entered to win a set of these awesome cards from Egg Press and Hello Lucky. And tell us again when uh, National Writing starts. It's the month of April, so it's 30 days, 30 letters, and challenge yourself to write something every day. If you run out of ideas, just head to writeoncampaign.com for more inspiration. That's awesome, and Ali will be posting that link. Um, <laughs> we're having a few technical difficulties, just give us a second. We'll be back on. You guys can watch us draw for a minute. That's really cute. I love this little hand. Are we good? Yeah. Hi again. Um, tell us again one more time where you can yeah. go. Okay, so you can go to writeoncampaign.com and do 30 letters in 30 days. If you run out of ideas, they have a lot of inspiration on the site to help you keep going and stay motivated. Which is awesome. And this six pack of letterpress cards plus a jelly roll to start will kickstart your month. Join us for Michaela's 30 Days of Lettering, which is coming soon to Creative Bug. And we'll see you next week for our next live shoot. Thank you for being here all Thanks. week. See you guys next time.